An arrow function has a shorter syntax than a standard function and does not bind its own this. These function expressions are best suited for non-method functions. So this is the arrow right here. So here are a few examples of how you can write a, an arrow function. So in parentheses you can put parameters, and then you put the arrow function, and in these curly braces you can put the statements, or you can just put an expression without curly braces, and when you just have this expression without curly braces, it's going to return this. So this next line here is equivalent to this line. If you put the return, it's going to return the value of this expression, but if you don't put the return, it's still going to return the value of this expression as long as there's no curly braces. Parentheses are optional when there's only one parameter. These two are equivalent, so there's no parentheses here. If you ever have a function with no parameters, it requires parentheses. Okay, now here's what a arrow function would actually look like compared to a normal function. So here's the normal function where you just have the, the name and then function, pass an x and y, and then here's the statement or expression that you're going to return x times y. But you could write that as an arrow function. It's going to be a lot shorter. You would either write it like this or like this. These are equivalent because you don't necessarily need the curly braces and you don't need the return statement either. So this would be the, the pretty short way of doing it. Now arrow functions work really well with higher order functions such as map, filter, and reduce that take other functions as arguments for processing collections of data. So here's an example. So let's say we have this materials array, and here are three ways to do the same thing. We have material links one, materials link two, and materials link three. So we're going to do materials.map, which you pass in a function, and here's passing in a standard function where we're just going to return material.length. But you could do it like this. Here we have the arrow function, and we're going to do the same thing. But then we can even shorten the arrow function to put all in one line, and you can just do material arrow materials dot length material dot length. So that's going to be a lot cleaner than doing than doing it like this. Until arrow functions, every new function defined its own this value. An arrow function does not create its own this context. So this has its original meaning from the enclosing context. So the following code is going to work as expected. So we have this person function, and down here we're going to create the, a new person. Uh, so we have this.age equals zero, and then we're going to do the set interval where we pass in a function, and inside this function we're going to add one to the age. In a normal function, the word this here is going to refer to the global object. But here, with the arrow function, it's going to refer to the person object. So it's going to work as expected. It's actually going to change the this.age here instead of the this.age that would be in the global object. Another thing you should know about this is whenever you're going to return an object, you always have to put the object in parentheses. So if you look at this line right here, inside these curly braces could refer to the statements that you want the, the, the function to run but it also could refer to an object. So to make it clear, you're going to have to put the object in parentheses if you want to return an object. And the final thing I want to talk to you about for arrow functions today is that you're not allowed to have line breaks. See how it breaks the next line? Now if you're using curly braces, that would be okay. But without curly braces, you're just going to have to put it all on one line. Well, thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, use your code for good.